Hello, ladies. Somebody, anybody? Hi. Hey, CJ, how you doing? Oh, I've had a long, it's, I've had a long week and it's barely Wednesday. <laughs> so I decided I'm going to, for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to glue. <laughs> so, nothing strenuous, just something to relax before I go to bed. So what I did, um, I have, uh, hi, Cheryl, Maggie, hi, uh, I have, I, well, let me backtrack, backtrack, I haven't said anything yet, see, I'm trying to unwind, I'm already tired, but I'm trying to unwind, uh, I have some, um, drawings that I've done over the past year or so. So what I did is I reduced them all to the same size and printed them. And now I am gluing them onto some cardboard because they're going to be the covers for some um, glue books that I'm going to be making to put in my shop later on whenever I get these done. And so I want him to be a little bit different. Of course, you know, I always do something kind of goofy. So what I did is, um, here's the one it started off. When, what I did is I cut it up um, into six pieces. And so when I, in theory, when I put them back together, I want it to kind of look a little bit like, um, you know, like, an old poster board, you know how they we put the big posters up. They had to do them in pieces in the old days because they couldn't print them that big, and it gave kind of a an odd look. So that's kind of sort of what I'm doing. I don't know that it's going to work. I haven't tried it yet, but um, in theory, <laughs> in theory, it's going to work. And I numbered them in the back because I knew I'd probably. Well, I could probably get them back in the same, you know, because there's not that many. But if I'd done a whole bunch, it's like, oh, my goodness. At least I have a point of reference right there, what she's supposed to look like. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So what have you ladies been up to? You need to talk to me. You've been crafting. Did you have to work all day? You having good weather, bad weather? What's going on? And let me know um, how how it looks, because a lot of people have been having trouble with with YouTube. So let me know if everything's okay past two weeks there's been a bunch of glitches oops I didn't put that over enough that's okay that's what we got scissors for I'm doing too good of a job I need a space in between or else it defeats the purpose I gotta put this one off center or else or else it's not gonna work. <laughs> It'll look too perfect. Oh, again, there you go. I need to make her nose a little crooked and her mouth a little crooked. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I looked on the monitor. Her nose really <laughs> looks crooked. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's what's going to make it fun. We 
We're supposed to have thunderstorms tomorrow. Not sure if it'll happen, but. So I made sure I lowered my umbrellas that I have outside because last time I forgot and it almost flew away. <laughs> It's quiet in the chat box. What's going on? I know you're there. What are you doing? Okay, so one done. Let that dry. Before, and then I'm going to do some other stuff to it. Um, kind of distress it and just some stuff stuff. <laughs> okay, there's one. Oh, right now. Oh. What state are you in, Maddie? I forget where everybody is. All right. So there's one. And then I'm going to do, let's see. I think I want to do the little girls. See how they come out. Okay, so we got Virginia, Massachusetts. Oh, you're, oh, Massachusetts. I don't know why I keep forgetting you're in Massachusetts. I used to live in Rhode Island. Right on the border. Well, all of Rhode Island's on the border of Massachusetts. <laughs> but I lived real close. I mean, if I wanted to go grocery shopping, I was in Massachusetts. That's how close I was. Practically went across the street and I was in Rumford. <laughs> and yes, you can tell I don't like to use my scissors that much. I like the raw edges. Just for the fun of it. Yeah, we're supposed to have the storm like not real, real bad, you know. You know, a little rain, a little wind, a little thunder. They say we'll wake up the thunder in the morning and then it'll clear up like afternoon. And then in the evening, then another storm's rolling in. I didn't really pay that much attention what direction it's coming from. Usually ours come from the northwest. But Okay, so then with the other one, what I did is I just fold it because I'm not big into measuring either. And then kind of sort of, you know, figured out where, <laughs> where the third was. Real scientific the way I did it. And then... This knows, I know I'm a little brain dead today. Stephanie, um, I wrote the numbers down. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Or else, you know, who knows where? Who knows where their head would be? And then I just tore them up. Did I already say hello, Stephanie? See, I saw your name and I forgot if I said hello. 
All right. Then, I need my cardboard. Then I just kind of, I'll kind of wrinkled it because I want it to be a little kind of wrinkly. I think I kind of glued it down too good because I don't see the wrinkles. <laughs> but we'll see. Whoops. We'll see how it works. Man, I chopped her eye. That's okay. It'll make it look cool. So if you have any, you know, any artwork of your own or sketches and or even the like little, you know, doodles that your kids do, you don't want to throw them away. Make a copy of them and shrink them down in size and put them in the cover of your of your junk journals or something. Or a journal for your kid. They really like that. Just put a bunch of scrap paper in there and then they can just scribble. If they're young, they can just scribble and draw and make a big old mess. I went to a used bookstore today, one I drive by all the time. I don't know why I've never stopped. Um, I'm usually, I think, on a mission when I go down that street. <laughs> I'm never just uh, lollygagging and going somewhere, so I never stop. But today I thought, you know what, I'm going to stop. So I find out that this lady owns it. She's probably already in her 70s, I guess. And she has owned it, I think she said, for 18 years. And so I was asking her, oh, do you have this? Do you have that? She goes, no, not really. No, not really. It's like, well, do you have this? No, not really. And then she goes on to explain to me that older stuff, you know, she, you know, she can't sell it. So she usually doesn't look for that. She looks for more contemporary stuff, you know, like, you know, paperback novels that no, oh, which way does that go? Oh, yeah. Paperback novels and stuff like that, even though she does have, you know, regular books, too. And um, she has, like, practically every, um, um, what's the name of that? <laughs> um, National Geographic. She must have. Every single National Geographic, all the way to like the 1930s. And she has them on these shelves, and she has them by the year. And, you know, it's pretty cool, actually. The, um, uh-oh, which way does that go? The, um, you know, inside it's really got some cool advertising and stuff. But the advertising is only like... In the real old ones, there's maybe like two pages in the front, maybe two eight pages in the back. Not much advertising at all. It was pretty much, you know, all the photography and stuff. Um, that was pretty cool. But um, but she only wanted a dollar for them, which was a really cool price. And if there was enough um, advertising in there, you know, it'd be, it'd be worth, you know, just to get the cool advertising but anyway so I was just kind of looking around she was showing me different things she had so then when she was saying you know well I can't get rid of the old books and everything because nobody wants them and I said well, what kind of old books do you have and she says well when she bought the place 18 years ago <laughs> there was a section that wasn't kind of sort of open to the public it was just books that the original owner had. So she took me back there. And, you know, it's all kinds of old, I mean, just old stuff that is all dusty and the backs of the books are falling off. And, you know, it's just a mess, you know. So, um, so she says, you know, I can't, um, people don't want this kind of stuff. And I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> You don't know my people. <laughs> so um, now the downside to it is this place is a really old building. It, with the heat index, I think it was like 105, 
five today. And that place, she has no air conditioning. So I was in there practically already dying, just her showing me a few places. And afterwards, you know, I had an appointment, so I didn't want to, you know, sweat like a pig uh, in there. <laughs> so, um, so I told her, I said, well, you know, can I come back someday and just go through all of this stuff? And she goes, oh, yeah, and there's another section over there, too, that's really creepy. She goes, I think it's kind of dangerous back there. You might fall over stuff. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, I would love to fall over stuff. <laughs> so um, I know the stuff isn't going anywhere, so I'm not really worried about it. So I think I'm going to wait till it kind of cools down because I could barely breathe in there. It was so hot because the section where she took me to, it's back in a corner and there's, you know, there's no breeze, there's no air and then it's dusty and oh, I thought I was going to die back there. So I'm not going back there anytime soon. Um, at these temperatures, but you know where I'm going to be going. And she goes, don't wear anything white, honey, because you're going to get all dirty. And I said, not to worry. <laughs> not to worry. I can handle it. Anyway. So. So, you know, I don't, I mean, maybe there's something that's got met value, but. Um, probably not. I'm sure the other owner sold, you know, all the good stuff and he just, he just was a hoarder, you know, and, um, we might find some cool covers for some journals. You never know. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't know if it's just where I am. <laughs> I keep thinking it's just where I am. Um, nobody has cool stuff around here. It's just so odd. Um, I don't know, if, you know, before anyone can find out, they just throw stuff away. I'm not really sure, but I do know that you just don't, as far as paper, you know, they have like furniture, you know, you can get, you can find stuff like that. But when you go to like estate sales around here, and when I say estate sale, they call anything an estate sale these days. All it is is a glorified garage sale, if you ask me, with all the contents of the house. <laughs> and um, I think that these, um, these people that go in and run these auctions for people for these estates, um, not auctions, but they, they sell the stuff off. Um, I think they literally go in and see all the paper stuff and throw it in the trash because they think who's going to buy the paper stuff. Right. So I think that's that's the thing. I think in this area, people just don't value that kind of stuff because nobody's looking for it that they know of. And there's my other one. Oh, my little girl. I got to highlight that bird a little bit better. But anyway, so we'll see. I even asked her, you know, like ledgers and stuff. And she goes, oh, no, I can't sell that stuff. I don't I don't get that stuff. I go, OK. And even for the auctions where she gets some of her books, she doesn't do that much anymore. But she said she used to go to these auctions for the books. And where she's talking about, it's like 100 miles away where she used to go. And there was a group of, um, you know, like junk shop owners. And they'd go together up there and they'd get like a U-Haul and drive up. They have a U-Haul and a van. <laughs> and each one of them, they would go together because each one of them were looking for different things. They weren't competing with each other. The stuff they sold were different. So they had a great old time going up there and cleaning out the whole place. What are you talking about, Maggie? Up there. When I used to live up there, that was really cool. Place. Well, you had to go drive in really, you know, out of, well, I guess, I guess I was more, we would drive up like to, to New Hampshire. There was a lot in Vermont. They have a lot of stuff. 
Um, and even Rhode Island, um, there was some neat old places that had some cool stuff. But I wasn't in it so much into the paper stuff then, you know. I didn't fully appreciate it. I saw it, but, you know, at that time, I didn't know, what do you do with that? It just was of no interest. But I would see it. They'd have it in these baskets and the real old shops and... What you'd really find up in the Rhode Island area were more textile, old textiles, old stuff, because um, that was the industry there like forever. Oops, a bit of market. That was the industry up there forever. Any kind of brand name that you think of that has to do with fabric and thread and everything, that was all manufactured up in Rhode Island. And some of them are still very few, but some of them are still there. And they had they had the the mills, the the water um, would run the mills there in the old old days, and they still have those around, which is really cool to see those. Even when I was up there, these. They made, still made a lot of fabric, and they had a lot of outlets for fabric. And I would, like, reupholster furniture and stuff, and I would go up there to the outlets and get the stuff. Oops. Be gentle. Oh, I got this. Where did I get this? It was either Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and it was like 70% off. I paid like nothing for this practically. I mean, literally, I think I probably paid like a dollar fifty for it. And I know how expensive these are. I had another one. People would joke with me because I used it so much. This is the other one. When I tried to measure something, I could never see the numbers. And everyone says, you need to get a new one. You need to get a new one. <laughs> well, I got a new one. Now I can read the numbers. Yeah, have you been like to Vermont? I mean, and it's beautiful during the spring and the fall just to go cruising up there and um, and go to these old, you know, off the, you know, off the beaten path, you know. Because the way I, we found some of those was we, we went, um, you know, just driving up there during the the fall, you know, to see all the pretty leaves and everything. And then we ran into all these different shops. Little hole in the wall. <laughs> and it almost looked like if you took the furniture or books out that the walls would fall down. But And then one of my husband's, because um, my husband um, lived in, he's originally from New York, and he also... Uh, lived in Rhode Island because some of his family lived up there and so one of his classmates had this antique shop I forget if he was in I think he was in Massachusetts and we went up there to his place it was up in some little old windy road it was so picturesque it was so pretty and he had lots of stuff too I don't remember so much the paper stuff but Really beautiful stuff. Let's 
can see around here, this area is known for oil and gas. So, I mean, they're not known for textiles or the manufacturing of any particular thing. Although about up until about maybe 15 years ago, this area manufactured a lot of furniture. And in the turn of the century, they had a lot of that made really hand carved beautiful furniture. And it was so, so funny because I got this piece of antique furniture. Oh, it's been about maybe six years ago or so. And I was going to refinish it and everything. And I just, in one place, I found a hutch, sort of like a hutch. And in the other place, I found a buffet and it was designed, you know, you could tell it was the same set. Um, the same design, at least at the very least, in two different places at two different, completely different times, like a year apart. And then, um, and of course, like most of my stuff, you know, I set it to the side. I was using it, but I hadn't refinished it. And uh, and then one day I got in the mood, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And so I was in pulling everything out, and on the bottom of one of the drawers. It had this metal plate that said, you know, the name of the company and all that. And it was manufactured right here where I live. It was so funny. I knew they had done a lot of manufacturing, you know, of um, furniture in the turn of the century. But um, it was kind of freaky to find two separate pieces that went with the same the same grouping made right here. And I'm just using this cheapy stuff because I'm going to put a coat of something over this. I'm not sure what. Something matte, though. I don't want it. I don't want it to be um, shiny. Yeah, Maggie, I drew these. And then I just made copies. Oops. I don't have to worry about copyright. <laughs> I give myself permission to use them. Alrighty. Next. Okay, I did those two. Oh, I think I want to do. I when I first did this little guy, <clears throat> to me he was supposed to be a dog, but he looks more like a bear or something. I don't know. I can't draw dogs. Well, I can't really draw anything, but he was supposed to be a dog. What does he look like? I think he looks like a bear or a cat. I don't know. But he's supposed to be a dog. But I'll take criticism. What does he look like to you guys? <laughs> I know he doesn't look like a dog. <laughs> Especially when I decided to put little whiskers on him. Well, although my dog does have little whiskers, so. I guess he can be a dog. A butler. <laughs> A bear. Yeah, somebody else told me he looked like a bear. Eh, he can be all the above, I guess. <laughs> he does, but he looks a little cuddly, I think. Because, see, here's his, he's got a wife, too. So that's supposed to be his little, where's his wife? Here's his wife. Oh, the wife ended up being a cat because I gave her a tail. So this is the family. 
that's the little family. <laughs> but I want him to be with his daddy. <laughs> A little butler bear dog thing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I got to cut first. Let's cut them up. I'm going to chop off the top of his head and right over his eyeball. That's okay. If you got here late and you're wondering, why are you cutting those up and then gluing them back right the way they're supposed to be? Because I'm trying to give it a um, an old poster look. And like I said, I don't know if it's going to work, but oops, I keep messing that up. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but you never know until you try something. I don't like doing the same thing all the time. I guess I bore myself easily. And I just got through making... A whole bunch of stuff that was all the same, and I needed something totally different and something that I hadn't done. And this fit the bill. All right. One and two. And punch it all up. Anyone can draw. I never drew until about a year ago. Well, maybe well, maybe a year and a half ago. Never drew anything. And I mean nothing. And um, and then I just got me a little sketchbook and I got went to of course went to YouTube. And there's people that show you how to just do eyes, you know, basic eyes. So I try to do basic eyes. And, you know, I knew that I could never do anything that looked realistic because I don't have that kind of talent. But I knew that if I tried to do like a caricature of something, then no matter how wrong it went, you know, you can always say, oh, that's how I meant it to look. <laughs> I wasn't trying to go for realism. That's the look. That's my look. And so you can get away with anything if you don't try to, you know, do some kind of realistic drawing. Because if you try to make it realistic, well, it's obvious to everybody when you don't do it right. But when you're doing some kind of a little caricature or something, no one can tell you you did it wrong. So I played around with the eyes a little bit and never could do it right. So I said, well... It's caricature time for me. And then, you know, the nose and the eyes and where you're supposed to put them. And, you know, I said, forget that. That's way too realistic for me. 
because I could never get the proportion right, where it went. And then when it comes to, you know, the value and, you know, where, the, you know, the, uh oh, oh, here he is. The famous thing is, you know, you have to know where the light is coming from. Forget the light. I don't see the light. I don't see things like that. So I don't know where the light's coming from. <laughs> I have no idea. And the way that I did these was I I did some papers on um uh oh oh that way I I did some papers on my jelly plate so that I could get some basic color in the background so I wouldn't feel intimidated and then just started you know sketching on top of that so I already had my background which you know sometimes that's intimidating so I had my background color. And then once I got my little cartoony face up there, then I just filled that in with other colors. And that was that. And then played around with pencils and, you know, whatever stuff I had that just sets around that I don't use. I think a lot of us think that we can't do something because we never tried it. And because we're hard on ourselves. We want everything to be perfect. And if if that's our expectation, well, then we're never really going to explore and try anything because none of us are going to be perfect at anything. But we can always have fun. Now, see, there you go. If I watch Dee Dee and Char I mean, which I do on occasion, there's no way I could draw what she draws. So I don't even bother to try. I know myself. I know I can't do anything like even remotely what she does. So I don't even bother because I don't want to discourage myself. <laughs> I don't place the bar quite so high. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen Vicki Ross's work. You know, she comes over for play day over here. And, you know, I don't try to draw anything like she does because I'll just have to shoot myself because it's not going to happen. But give me a jelly plate and a pencil. And I can have some fun. Oh, he looks kind of cute. In a little papa kind of way. <laughs> okay, what other one? I still have two more boards. I guess I have to do mama. Right? Oh, I like this one to me. Oh, I should have done her. Oh, I'm just going to find some more boards. I like this lady. To me, she looks like she's a um, reptilian of some kind. Don't you think? Doesn't she look like any second she's going to stick out her tongue or something? <laughs> going to zap a bug or something? I'm going to do her next. I think she's cute, too. She looks like she's going to zap a bug any minute. And see, that's how you get all your colors on here is because of the jelly plate. And so, a lot, you know, half the work is done for you. I mean, most of the colors on her face were already there. And then I just put a little bit like maybe for some rouge and 
put some big blob. No, that blob was already there underneath there. So there wasn't, as far as paint, it was just her hair is what I pretty much, pretty much did. As far as paint, adding paint after the jelly plate. a show. I don't watch that much TV, so I don't remember the name. Oh, it was probably a couple of years ago. And it was about, I think it was about aliens. I'm not quite sure. But after I had drawn her, she reminded me of that one of those, I guess she was one of the main characters. Um, You guys may know what show I'm talking about. It's not on anymore. Get the numbers. I know it was on ABC. I can visualize that. ABC. Alright. Ooh, this board's a little stiffer. Walking Dead? No. Um, no, it wasn't Walking Dead. She was like from another planet. Was there a show just plain called Alien? I don't remember now. getting hot in here. How come? I have my air on. I must not have it cool enough. Alrighty. Mama Bear is saying, what about me? What about me? You're next. You're next.
I hear my dog barking. Well, I finished all of my eco prints that I had orders for. Oh, I almost thought I was never going to get it done. Oops. So I'm so happy about that. Got those all mailed out. And my lady that um, works at the post office, we started talking about all that. And she lives on a big old giant um, farm, ranch, whatever you want to call it. Forget how many acres they have. And she says they have oodles of different kinds of trees. So she's going to get me a sample from all her trees. And then I'm going to test them all and see which ones print the best. And then she's going to, you know, supply me. Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh. And she's going to supply me with the ones that print well. So I'm excited. Hey, Samantha. Hi, Patricia. Uh oh, now you guys got the storm. Oh, no. Well, maybe we're getting yours. Maybe it's coming this way. Because usually you guys get the storms after us. So maybe it's going in the opposite direction this time. You know, if you do some some kind of pictures like this, you can make stamps out of those too, out of those um, foamy stamps. You can trace your design on the stamp and um, have a stamp of your drawing. No copyright. Okay, Lizard Lady is done. Okay, let's do Mama. Poor thing. She's all lonely. I go around birthing the babies. You just leave me here to the side. Are you talking to me, Tanya, why I am doing being up so late? You don't know me very well then. <laughs> this is not late for me. <laughs> I get my second wind around 10 o'clock my time. And I like to use this to wind down from the day. It's how I relax. And then all the night people come out and join me. the other way. Oh, well, we can do that now. What am I doing? Okay. I, uh, last year and, well, this year and last year, 
um, I was doing some drawing. And so I took some of my drawings and made copies. And now I'm cutting them up <laughs> into squares and gluing them down on some cardboard because I want to give it a kind of like a poster, old time poster look. And then these are going to be covers once I get them done and do some stuff on them. They'll be covers for my um, new um, blue books that I'm going to put in my shop. So that's what I'm doing. Gluing. Tearing and gluing. Just, just to be different. I know I could have just glued them down in the first place and not tore them up. And then what fun. Uh oh, I forgot to mark those down. Then, uh oh. Then what fun would that be? That goes like that. So that means that this is five and six. Come on, Rose. We're going to make a mess of the last ones. One, two, three, four. And, but then what fun would that be? Just taking one big piece of something and gluing it. <laughs> It would not have been difficult. This or time consuming. <laughs> okay, I'll cut that later. Mm -hmm. And we figured out she's a kitty cat because she's got a kitty cat tail. So, I guess her hubby is either a kitty cat too, or they are an inter-animal marriage. That might be. Let's see, does the kid look... Does the kid look by animal? I think so. Look. He could be a little bear. He could be a little kitty cat. You know? Don't get me started on my stories now. Oh, I finished. Um, those of you that were here the other, the last time I live stream when I was doing all my stamping for my big, um, ledger journal. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I'm not going to stamp no more, no more. And I'm just going to call it done. <coughs> oh, excuse me. the mommy. There goes the mommy. I have an old Rottweiler and my friends always say he looks like a big teddy bear. We're not sure how old he is. He's a rescue dog, but we've had him for about nine years or so. So you know he's not he's not young. <laughs> we've had him that long, and when we got him, um. The vet thought he might be anywhere from five to seven years old. So 
I don't know if he was that old. If he was, then he's really old. He has really bad arthritis now, and it's hard for him to get up and down, and he gets all he gets all excited when he finally gets up and he starts barking like he's really accomplished something, you know, like he's he's attacking somebody, <laughs> like. Get out of my way. I'm bad. <laughs> and we go, oh, okay, you're bad. We'll get out of your way. And because we have um, we have hardwood floors now because of this arthritis. Um, well, first of all, we have hardwood floors. We, we tore all the carpet out of the house. It's an old old home, um, around 115 year old home, and it had beautiful beautiful floors that we refinished. Well, of course, when you got four dogs, hello, running through the house. Those refinished floors did not look refinished for very long. Uh, and now with his really bad arthritis, he's lost on his hind legs um, almost all his muscle, you know. So now he's having to use all of the front of his body to get up. So because he's not balanced, he doesn't have the strength, and he's always using the front, then it became really difficult for him to get up on our you know slick wood floors so we ended up bringing in some area rugs and so when he's on the area rug he can it's still you know you can tell it really bothers him still to get up and down but it's a lot easier he's not slipping and sliding all over the place because he can grab onto the rug but what's funny about him is um sometimes he'll lay down on the regular floor because i guess it feels cooler than laying on the rug and then when he wants to get up he <laughs> he's so animated. He looks at us with these little cow eyes like, okay, how am I going to get up now? I'm on the, I'm, I'm on the wood floor and you all know I cannot get up from here. So he's learned because, <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's a hundred pounds. It isn't like I can just pick up the little guy and take him outside and go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, you just can't do that with a hundred pound dog. So, so we've learned that when, He's um, off of the off of the carpet and he's on the wood. Let's say this is the wood. <laughs> this is the carpet. We go, okay, Junior, you got to roll over. And he will literally get on his back, stick his legs up in the air, and then we'll roll him like one time, two times <laughs> until he gets on the carpet. <laughs> and then he can get up and he's all happy. To, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he starts just barking like, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. But it's so funny because he knows the routine. We know the routine. We go, stick him up, Junior. We got to roll you over. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh, I told my husband, you got to invent some kind of a harness for him. So I've looked at different ones online, you know, for aged dogs and handicapped dogs and senior dogs. And they don't address his problem, you know how he has to get up and where he does and doesn't have the strength. And then the, some of the ones that they do sell, we bought, we bought one oh, maybe about two years ago because he was already starting that about two years ago. And it is so bulky and cumbersome and you, you know, have to have some kind of an engineering degree to get it on and to move it. And then he just, you can't leave it on because it's bulky and he's not comfortable. So then what's the point? Because if you have to take it off, how do you get it back on him when he's laying down? He's got to be standing up for that stupid harness to be put on him. Well, if he could get up, you wouldn't need the harness. You get the story. Okay. So uh, we haven't figured out something that really, really works. That's that you can pick him up without putting pressure on any one part of his body. Cause you know, you could crack his ribs. It's got to be evenly distributed because he's a you know, hundred pounds and it has to be comfortable enough that he can, keep it on and lay down and be comfortable so that when he it's needed, it's on him. 
you know. So, <laughs> so when I invent that, I'll become rich because we're not the only people that have a big dog that has that kind of a problem, I'm sure. But uh, we haven't come up with that quite the angle yet. So until then, it's roll over, Junior. <laughs> Just keep rolling and hope there's a rug close by. Oh. All righty. So what do you guys think? I think this will come out kind of cool. I'm going to do some kind of, I'm not sure. I know maybe some distressing on it to make it look even more aged with, hold on one second. Let me go see if I have some sandpaper. See what happens with a little, just a little. I don't mind if I lose some of these because it just makes it look a little more worn. But you got to keep his nose. You got to know he's some kind of an animal. <laughs> you got to know he's some kind of an animal. <laughs> I forgot I used some stuff I wasn't supposed to use on these. <laughs> Made it all stiff. Forgot. Forgot. Smudge him a little bit. Just smudge him up a little bit. Then, knock over a few things. Ouch! That just missed my foot. I wait till you see what it was. <laughs> That just missed my foot. <laughs> that could have been dangerous. <laughs> you would have heard the screamings. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but when I buy these, they hardly ever work. They clog up right away. Do yours clog up? Now, I have a little bit of the white here, so let me just highlight it a tiny bit. 
And you know, a little bit on the eyeball, just to brighten it up a tiny bit. A little bit of his whiskers. A little whisker, a little bit of his little buttons. And what I learned for me anyway, the way I like to do stuff, don't try and draw a straight line. It's never going to work anyway. So just do squiggles and Straight lines don't work, so, you know, why bother? <laughs> okay, so that brightened him up a little bit, right? Okay, that's that so far. And it's brightening up their whites so all a little bit dull. Print didn't come up so light. I guess they're the polka dot girls, the pokey dotty girls, <laughs> the pokey dotties. Okay, next. <laughs> next.
Alrighty. Hey, Max. We're just fixing up some stuff here. Gluing and fixing, fixing and gluing. Brightening up the corners of the eyes because she's a happy mama. Make her a little happy mama. We'll leave mama alone for a little while. Well, let's give her a little bit of a chin. <laughs> let's give her a little chin. Okay. All right. So. Gotta do something about that bird because you can't hardly even see it. And I'll have to get some kind of color to color in there to separate because it's all so much the same color. So I'll have to find something out. I'll get some pencils or something. Okay, she's a little brighter now. It's all about the circles. It's all about the circles. He's a little brighter. <laughs> okay. I just want to probably want to leave her just as evil as she is. Yeah. <laughs> Telling you in circles. Call this the circle series. She's done. <laughs> so oh.
there's two done. Oh, Mama. Mama. He'll just leave Mama alone. Did we already? No, we didn't do her yet. Or did we? I don't know. Okay, ladies, that might be it for tonight. I think they came out kind of cool. I'll end up putting some kind of a, a matte kind of coating over them to keep, you know, the papers down and stuff like that. And then they'll get glued on top of um, something else to make my other, you know, some other um, cardboard to make cover for a journal. I mean, they'll come out kind of cute. They'll be different. You won't find any other journals looking like these. That's for sure. Let's keep Mama on the top. Come on, Mama. And then I've got a couple of more. I just did, I just ran out of um, cardboard, but I've got I got this lady, and I got this lady, I got this lady, this lady. Talk about circles. <laughs> Circles. <laughs> circles. Man, I didn't realize how, how much I was into circles. Circles. Okay, that's the same lady. 
No. I just got the same kind of circles. And circles. <laughs> Oh dear. Alrighty. Well, I hope you guys, those of you in line of these storms that are going to be going through the next couple of days, I hope that you have good roofs, <laughs> good tires, so that you can stay, stay safe and dry. So we'll have one in the morning, then it'll clear up, then we'll have one later on in the night. Let's roll that up a little bit. I was going to leave her as is, but she doesn't have any glue right there, so that worked out just fine. Perfect. All right, ladies, thank you again for keeping me company. And um, try drawing something, um, anything. And you know what you can do too, if if you wanted, to, if there's something in particular you like, you know, like like a flower or you know a hummingbird or something like that, you know, find a picture that you like. Get yourself some, um, you know, um, what do you call that? <laughs> Must be time for me to to, to go to bed. Um, get um you know what i'm talking about the real thin paper help me out people you know what i'm talking about <laughs> tracing thank you tracing paper and just keep tracing and tracing and tracing and tracing and tracing and then you're going to get the feel for it and it's not going to be perfect when you go and try and do it but who cares you know it's going to be your journal anyway and then just try try drawing it and you'd be surprised you know, there's that connection between the movement in your brain and, you know, all those things that happen. And um, it really does work. So just keep repeating. It, it'll connect. It really will. All right. Thank you again. And I will see you guys. Mm, I don't know when, but soon, I'm sure. All right. <clears throat> Thanks again. Good night, ladies.